but I want to nail in on 10 things that we learned this past Sunday. Now, the first two things involve Brady, Belichick, Patriots, Buccaneers. I want to get into that. Keep this with an open mind. I'm not biased. This is just what, from what I've seen, being a fan of the NFL for so long, and what I saw last night. Takeaway number one, Bill Belichick had just as much to do with the dynasty as Tom Brady. That is what we learned yesterday. I'm not saying that one is over the other. I'm not saying that it's Brady's responsible. He carried the way. I'm not saying that Belichick's responsible. Even. Even keel. Even keel. Just as even as Miles Gaskin's floor versus uh, ceiling in fantasy football. It's like the same. Two carries, three yards. Gosh, that was disgusting. But Brady and Belichick are on the same level as far as which one led the dynasty. Because I know that was the question. I know it was, okay, well, Brady proved by going to the Buccaneers that uh, he won a Super Bowl without Bill Belichick. So he proved that he was responsible for the Patriots dynasty because Bill Belichick didn't do anything with the Patriots team that he had. Well, last night proved, okay, Bill Belichick, he competed and he outsmarted Tom Brady in a lot of assets. So uh, I think they were both responsible for that Patriots dynasty. I think at this point, close the book. It's over. Discussion is over. They're both 50-50. They both did their part. They both contributed. No one is higher than the other. Bill Belichick had a great part to do with it. Tom Brady had a great part to do with it. They both are amazing. Takeaway number two. This is another Bill Belichick, Tom Brady takeaway. Again, unbiased just from watching the game. And leave your thoughts in the chat as well if you think otherwise. But Bill, Bill Belichick, last night, lost the game. But when you talk about Belichick versus Brady... I think Belichick had the upper hand last night. Listen, I'm a huge fan of Tom Brady. I really am. I love seeing the history, and I think I, I'm one of the few people that likes to soak up the moment and likes to soak up the history that we watch, and I know that this is never going to happen again, seeing someone play uh, as long as he's been playing, and I want to see those records keep on continuing to get broken. Uh, but last night, it, it proved that Bel Bill Belichick can game plan with against almost anyone. The team that Bill Belichick has with the Patriots versus the team that the Bucks have with Tom Brady. It's we went into this day. I think 83% of people uh, according to what they showed on Sunday Night Football last night uh, of fans voted for the Buccaneers to win by like double digits. I think everybody expected the Buccaneers to just blow the Patriots out of the water. That didn't happen. And so it was a little bit more even and I think we have to give Belichick a lot more credit for that. With the team and the talent that he has that's so depleted versus the talent of the Buccaneers, the most one of, if not the most talented team in the NFL. So Belichick just kind of uh, fought and, and battled with Tom Brady, kept up with them. So takeaway number two, I think that Belichick beat Tom Brady. If you want to talk about Belichick versus Tom Brady, Bucks versus Patriots, Bucks won. Uh, Rams, this is takeaway number three. Rams are not bulletproof. Kyler Murray is playing at an MVP level. Nothing can stop him. He's all the way up. The Rams' defense has holes. Kyler Murray exposed it. Rams' offense has holes. Cliff Kingsbury and the defense exposed it. The Rams, are they the best team in the NFL? I don't know. Jimmy Garoppolo, takeaway number four, should remain the starter for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, he's going to be out for the next couple of weeks with a calf injury. But Trey Lance, he looked, he, he had his flashes. He had his flashes. But in winning football games, it's Jimmy Garoppolo, I feel like, is the best option. Takeaway number five, the Steelers' offense may struggle like this all season long. I, I have a lot of faith in Mike Tomlin. I really do. And it, that's the only factor that's making me consider Oh, he's a good coach. He's going to turn things around. It'll be fine. I mean, it's been four weeks at this point, and the Steelers' offense has just not been looking great. And I think the Steelers' offense is going to continue to struggle all year long. So whether it's Ben Roethlisberger, whether it's like they don't run with Najee Harris enough, I don't know. Something's got to change over there. Takeaway number six, Teddy Bridgewater is vital. Vital. 
for a playoff push for the Denver Broncos. Drew Locke came in, did not put up a single point against the Baltimore Ravens. It was against the Ravens, the toughest test yet, but 3-0 start. Teddy Bridgewater, he was responsible for a lot of that. Accurate, one of the more accurate quarterbacks in the NFL this, she- this season. Bridgewater is the guy for Broncos, and if they want to make a playoff push, at least for the wild card race, Teddy Bridgewater needs to stay healthy and needs to be the quarterback. Next takeaway, Justin Fields will be fine. I know everybody freaked out about that game against the Cleveland Browns. First NFL game, tough defense. First time he played first team players. It's okay. Then he had somewhat of a decent game against the Detroit Lions. So he'll be fine. He'll be fine in the NFL. He's just going to continue to get better. Don't worry about Justin Fields. He'll be a good player. Uh, Takeaway number eight, the Eagles need to get better within the five-yard line. Okay, red zone percentage, efficiency. Not that bad. Not bad at all. I think going into the game, it was like 83%, 85% touchdown efficiency in the red zone. But when they get within the five-yard line, we've seen this in the last two home games. I don't know what it is. The play calling just all of a sudden breaks down. Nick Sirianni, the offensive coordinators, I don't know. It it just does not work. And we saw it the last home game before this one against the Chiefs where it was fourth down, decided to go for it on fourth down, did a little bit of a trickery play. Uh, That did not work. Was it Quez Watkins that had the pass and you just threw it incomplete? Why are you throwing it out of the end zone on fourth down? Just throw it up. If it's intercepted, it's intercepted. Yesterday against the Chiefs, uh, flat route to Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Within the five-yard line, you just lost three yards right there. And the, the Eagles need to get better within the five-yard line. Other than that, I think Jalen Hurts is, is killing it for the Eagles' offense. Takeaway number nine, Zach Wilson is the future of the New York Jets. Looked great. Two really good throws. One, Corey Davis, that touchdown, which if you started him in fantasy football, thank you for listening to Time to Football. I got your back. And then... A one against the sideline towards the end of the game. They were trying to make some clutch plays to try to, uh, you know, beat the Tennessee Titans in overtime or was it close to overtime? I don't know. But it was a perfectly thrown uh, post post route pass and to the towards the sideline. Zach Wilson, he is the future. He's going to be fine. Saquon Barkley, last takeaway, will not be limited anymore. They have let the chains loose. Saquon is back to being Saquon. Looked great against the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints. And the last couple of weeks, he's been playing at 80% of running back snaps. So Saquon Barkley is now, now has the reins. And that is 10 takeaways from this past week.